Greetings everyone and welcome back to Expeditions Viking, where in between this episode and the last, I uh, checked to see how our morale was going and I've come to the conclusion that my party is excessively greedy. <laughs> and unfortunately, some of my favourite characters are excessively greedy. Edis is the only one who's altruistic, um, whilst neither Nefia nor as Leofir are altruistic, neither of them are greedy, so maybe it, it, it would affect it in some positive way, but uh, Ketil, Roskva, Roskva, dear Roskva, why? And uh, Gunnar are all greedy, so probably not particularly happy that I just gave away all those valuables, but the damn it, I don't care. Maybe I need to get a better party. But it's time for us to uh, do some optional talking around. Right, Palni, let's talk about a pig. Palni leans against the wall, content to watch his brother toil. He is a slight man, with a wiry bearing and a sharp glint in his eyes. His eyes snap to you during your approach. You get the impression that he is quickly forming a complete opinion about you, and it isn't flattering. Are you Palni? His nostrils flare, and he rolls his eyes, heaving his shoulders in an exaggerated sigh. Wow, okay. Pause for a moment, as though composing himself. An accurate rejoinder to your mundane inquiry would suggest affirmation. Wow. It's going to be one of those. I'm not going to I'm not going to play into his silly little game. Tell me about the half dancings. He taps his lips for a moment. For disputing the Jarl's appointment, they arranged the liquidation of my fraternal sibling. He sighs wistfully, wearily, though his controversy was not a uh, domiciliary, uh, domiciliary sentiment. Homicide is an inordinate compensation. Their ma malfeasance was left unpenalized. You, I can tell you that your family has great deal of fun with you. According to your father, the half dance and stole a hog. An ugly sneer mars his thin face. Their illicit appropriations have occurred anteriorly. His voice drips with bitterness. Prosperity and influence, it seems, supersede veracity. I'm done here. Ah, oh, my lord. Hello, Samar. Samar towers over you. The summit of his head is cropped and closely cut, and though there is obviously great strength in his bulk, he carries himself in a pronounced slouch. He looms in a deep set. Uh, he, he looms in deep set eyes squinting. An acknowledging rumble thum thrums in your direction. Hello, Samir. I'm Avak. He nods, and the corners of his wide mouth drag slowly upwards. Hi. Samir's trunk-like arm falls to his side still grasping the mallet he was using to hammer a new fence post into the mud. What do you do, Samuel? He looks at the mallet in his hand and smiles. Fix things for father. Help little brother. Tell me about the half dancings. His frown somehow deepens and for a moment you fear that his face might split in two under the weight of it. They killed my big brother. I'm sorry, Samuel. He looks across the lot at Palni. Why do they want to take more? Your father says the half dancers stole a pig. Did they? His eyes dart towards his father, who seems to be watching you both from across the lot. Our pig. He stra straightens his back. His voice rolls like thunder from an oncoming storm cloud. Half dancers are liars. I'll let you get back to work. Right then. Uh, I can't be sure about that. I was hoping that I could actually trust him, honestly. Um, but the fact that his father was kind of watching over everything. Now, oh. right, someone over there. Good. Let's go and chat with them. Hmm. I'm afraid I can't do super deep, rumbling voices justice. I've I've got two settings. The the kind the kind of Tenor, sonorous Welsh, and the deep and rumbling evil of Dark Havoc. There's nothing in between. I can't. I can't do anything else. It's just one or all, all those. One of those. It, two settings. That, that's all I've got. Two gears for my voice. I'm afraid. 
Uh, right, there you are. My lord, you're far away. I doubt you'd have seen anything. Um, all right, Builder. Let's have a chat. Builder is busy spe uh, spearing hay on a pitchfork as you approach. He's nearing the end of his prime years, with close-cut hair and a well-kept beard. He drives the pitchfork into the mud and leads onto it. Yeah? Who are you? Avak, Thang of Skian. He raises an eyebrow, his mouth a thin line. No shit? I have questions for you. He sighs and nods at you. I expect you do. Oh my god, it's, it's, it's just the opposite of the sun. Uh, there's a fight about a pig. He clenches his teeth and looks away for a moment. They're at it again. Of course they are. He loves an even stare at you. Listen, the half dancers might be up to the up their own asses, but Mardol's bunch is looking for a fight. They've a dent in their honor and it's festering. The pig is an excuse to pick a fight. Tell me about the half dancers. His deep set eyes search your face for a moment. They run a good timbering outfit and have friends with clout. Supported the Yar when the king appointed her. About 13 winters past, there was trouble with Mardol's brother, Azer. Half Danner's brother was first through thought to have killed him. Turned out, he was home with a cold at the time of the murder. Most folk believe Half Danner's uncle was the real killer. Nothing ever came of it, though. Tell me about the Mardolsons. Shakes his head with a sigh. Been in town for a while. Came for, in from Ars and Viborg. Good folk, mostly. Mardol's son fell in with a bad crowd, though. Started trouble. Killed one of the Jarl's soldiers. It didn't end well. Thanks. Well, that doesn't really give me anything to go on. Ugh, this is annoying. Okay, well, we know where we need to be. So let's get down there. No, no, I haven't killed the rats yet. They're, they're the lowest on my priority. Because uh, what are they going to do? Eat the food that... Uh, Honestly, how is there even any food in your house? You weren't even in the house yet. Thinking about it, I actually... <laughs> yeah, if he hadn't been there, putting... Hmm... That's curious. Uh, Flirty! Let's have a talk with you. The man before you has the robust and hail-bearing of a farmer. His crow's feet are greying, and greying hair tests are his prime years laid behind him. A fat pig snuffles about in the yard. He leans on the fence and watches you approach. What do you want? Were you fighting over that pig? And wipes his nose on his sleeve. Old Mardol's making trouble, accusing us of thievery. The frown knits together on his brow as he looks over you. Who are you to meddle anyway? Um. Hmm. I mean. <sighs> I am meddling, ultimately. I could just strong arm and say, look, I'm strong, I'm armed, and I have a he herd of Vikings with me. Um, I'm Avax, son of Yon, then of Skien. His eyebrows threaten to retreat with this receding hairline. That's a mouthful. Yeah, it is, actually, every time I have to say it. Consider this for a moment. Maybe you are one to talk them... Maybe you're one to talk them down. I'll clear this mess up. You'll see we're in the right here. Okay, is there anyone else I should talk to? Glances at two others in the yard. My cousin, Half Danner, and his girl, Ranvig, were here. Anyone else? Bridget Stevenson lives in town. Got blood in both families. And about that pig. Glances over his shoulder at the animal. It grunts busily as it roots around the yard for something edible. You notice notches on the pig's ears. What about it? What's Mardol's claim? Sexy's lower lip. Says we stole the hog. Cut an extra notch to make it look like one of from our seventh litter. I examine the pig. The hog squeals and scampers back as you approach, watching you distrustfully with beady eyes. There are two notches on its left ear, and three on the right. The outermost cut on the right ear looks ragged and uneven. The pig clearly struggled when it was made. Uh, can I examine it again? Hog squeals and scampers as you approach. Heard enough. Okay, let's hope so. Well, I'd like to speak with your uh, your kin. Before you is a young woman with pale blonde brown hair tucked demurely under a woven cap. She sets down the bundle of rushes she was spreading on the muddy yard. 
She doesn't quite meet your eyes when she turns to face you. Y yes? Hmm. My name is Avak. I'm trying to get to the bottom of this pig business. She seems to relax somewhat, though still refuses to look you in the eye. I don't know why they want to fight over something so silly. She glances at Fleary, then at Halfdan. Her nostrils flare and her lips quivers for a moment before she returns her attention to you. Hmm. What do you do? She shrugs, the formless dress momentarily betraying her womanly shape. I tend to stay the stead, help my mother and aunt with the chores. Tell me about the Mardolsons. Her face flushes and she cups her reddening cheeks. Some of them aren't so bad. They would just talk instead of holding on to the to the past. Oh, I see. Hmm. What do you mean about the Mardolsons? The young woman glances at half down and lowers her voice, blushing furiously. Palni is smart. Ah, oh, no. His voice is like honey and his mind is quick. If only his father and brother would listen to him. Mm. All right. Did Flitty steal the pig? She looks at the hog as it snuffles around and shakes her head. He, he wouldn't do that. She glances, searching at your face. A pig isn't worth fighting for. The model son should let it go. Thank you, Ranvik. I'll let you get back to your work. Mm. I wish I'd spoken to her first now, before talking with the, uh, with... The sun. You approach a man who's hard at work, and plenty left uh, have left their marks. There is a stout strength about him, but it carries a prodigious gut. He smiles jovially and runs a hand through his graying hair before offering it to you. Half Danner. I'll shake the hand. He gri his grip is firm and his hands calloused. Bjornsson, from Skjern. You knew my father? He sees your questioning look and continues. I did business with your father. More than a few of your house houses are built with my lumber. Hmm. What do you do? After his chest swells with pride and a hint of smugness creeps onto his face. My family has worked the forest outside Rebe for many years. We helped build this town. Tell me about the Mardelsons. His face darkens, a sneer tugging at his upper lip. They're a family too weak to stand on its own, so they blame their problems on their betters. Go on. The Patriarch leans against the wall. He closes his eyes and his hands twitch, as if he is drawing forth memories like water from a well. Mardol's oldest boy fought when Ranghildr was declared Jarl. He was killed in the night. A cowardly affair. He meets your gaze squarely, eyes hard. They accused my brother, Dellinger, of the deed. Falsely, as they do. Does the pig belong to Fleary? He frowns and crosses his arms. That is what, uh, that is what this is about? His eyes fall on the hog. He looks tired. We have plenty. Why would we throw away our honor to steal from the Mardelsons? Thanks, thanks, half -Dan. That's all I need to know. Okay. Well. Hmm. Where do I go to next? Resolve the feud. I could talk with you, or I could talk with... I wonder if it, who I talk to is deciding who I side with, because that's not really what I want to do. I'm a little bit concerned that I haven't heard enough, nearly enough, to make a, a judgment like that, honestly. I'm worried about that. I'm not going to I'm not gonna accuse someone of wrongdoing without knowing that they, they've committed some wrongdoing. Can I actually go in your house? Seem to be able to do something. You know what? No. No, no, no. We're going to wander around a little bit more first. There's other things we can do. Uh, Skalgrimr. Let's have a chat. Being the most powerful woman in Denmark, Ranghilder has second a second longhouse just for her herdmen. Warriors from all over the north come here to seek work and train with her renowned Haskals. You recognize Skalgrimr from your father's funeral feast. The tall man is Ranghilder's bannerman and lover, and he never leaves her side. He raises a hand in greeting. Oh there, Avak. I greatly enjoyed myself at your feast. Especially the show you put on at the end. You fought well. Hmm. Uh, it was a good feast, and one I won't be able to match again for some time when I host another one. You will be invited. That means a lot coming from you. I'm told you and I held a fort a dozen uh, Haraldor uh, Watertooth Saskals at Bravelier. Yeah, you know what? We'll, we'll acknowledge their prowess. 
Aye, it's true. We stood back to back and faced them three to or four at a time. The fight took a whole day. Tell me, what brought you to rebate today? I need a few, few good warriors for my herd. Scratches his beard pensively. I've chosen a bad time to recruit. Mercenaries have no trouble finding low-risk work at the moment. What about the trouble in the marsh? What trouble is that? People have been disappearing in those marshes for years. It's gotten a lot worse lately. As many as a dozen disappearances over the past two months. Entire trade caravans simply vanishing there. The whole city is awash in rumour of lantern men, men uh, man-eating witches, and other such nonsense. If your interest goes beyond idle curiosity, I, such, I suggest you speak with Van Hilder about it. She's been trying to find people willing to do something about it. Hmm. Well, that's tempting. Uh, can I talk to you a little bit more? Sorry, Avic. Nobody's looking for work right now. As long as the danger persists in the marshes, I doubt you'll find anyone willing to go. Okay, so this is now a mandatory quest. There's nothing I can do about it. I'm going to have to deal with the stuff going down in the marsh. Breeze and some herbs. We've got ridiculous amounts of herbs. We've got 78 herbs. My lord. That's more than anyone needs. Okay. Well. That young man with the bow. Is he from... I, I didn't see what they say. How did you say that? No one ever comes here willingly. Oh, that's interesting. That's very interesting, actually. Now, we've got two quests. We've got the rat quest, which I am going to put off. I am not going to do a bloody rat quest. I mean, I will eventually. When I have nothing else to do, I will do a rat quest. But I'm not going to do that until then. Uh, I've been thinking. Hmm. It's just... Feels like as though we always talk about the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Well, it's like, there's never anything new to talk about. We're just moving in circles. It's all in your head. You're overthinking things. Quick, someone's onto the Matrix. Dispatch. Dispatch the agents. Got to deal with it. All right, let's have a look at the map. Where are we right now? We are at uh, Ingemar's home. We've also got a... a uh, a, oh, we can take this. Uh, yes, apparently. Uh, it wasn't nailed down. It's, it's not thieving if, if it's not nailed down. Uh, Hannah Bristlebeard. Let's have a chat with you. Reeb's most central blacksmith is well renowned for his broad knowledge of metalworking. He can forge a sword as readily as he mends a broken pot. While well, one of his apprentices bangs away on something near the other furnace, the smith himself meets you in the yard. He looks out, my honourable thing. Have you come to commission a weapon from the best smithy north of Saxony? Hmm. Why didn't you help when we were attacked? It was in this place, I imagine. Show him the necklace. Do you recognise the patterns of this material? Ooh, do you sell arms and armour? Let's talk about what kind of equipment you make. Will you repair some equipment for us? Let's talk about your stock of material. Um, do you see this medallion? Smith holds a medallion an inch from his face and examines the engravings carefully. Hmm. No. Can't say I've ever seen engravings like this before. He hands the necklace back to you. You ought to ask that lady who sells supplies at the market. She's travelled far and wide. Oh, okay, so we're going to be going back up there. Uh, do you sell arms and armour? In a manner of speaking, I build such items to order. You can bring me the materials I need and I will make whatever equipment you require. Let's talk about what equipment you can make. Uh, max tier resource cap 3. Crafting shows the highest tier of weapons you can craft, as well as the resource cap for the selected item type. Max tier resource cap 2. Armor smithing. Uh, special prop, uh, property chance 25%. Because he's got artisans. We need to get an artisan of our own. We super do. Uh, let's see. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't mind a bow. Critical damage multiplier, armor piercing quality. I mean, could we increase this at all? Don't have enough resources to craft this item. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, well, it was super poor. Oh well. You sure you don't want anything? Um, I'm not going to ask him why he didn't help us because that's really confrontational. No, I'll be back if I need anything. For now, we're not going to. Uh, we're not going to, you know, straight up, uh, almost accuse someone. Because that just sounds like you're calling someone a coward. Right. Let's have a chat. You've been all over the place, apparently. Let's have a quick 
chat with you. Uh, welcome back, gracious thing. Are you looking for to restock your supplies? Perhaps some other time. Is there no one here? Get it now before stock runs out. So feud. Who can I speak to in here? Unless did we speak with Ida? Might have. Tom Crow is an energizing young woman. Uh, good morning, honorable thing. Just taking in the sights. Okay, yeah. Uh, well, apparently, I don't have anyone to talk with. Let's... No, I don't see anyone here I can, I can speak with about that. Unfortunately. Well, let's go to uh, Ingemara's home then. Oh, that's quite, quite the, uh, the pain. Even if I'm tracking this, I imagine it's not going to tell me who to speak with. I mean, I've talked to pretty much everyone here. Unless having the quest highlighted is going to change it. Can you talk? Are you wandering around? No. So glad to see you again, my highly honorable thing. Are you looking to peruse our fine selection of metals and heights? Um, are you a little young to be in charge here? It's not a problem. Death right back there. I'll get him if there's trouble. <laughs> uh, the boy changes the topic so fast you almost get a whiplash. What's your name? I'm Avak. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too, Avak. Okay, perhaps some other time. Uh, we'll see once more if I can chat with you about this. Show me your selection. No, there's really nothing I want to buy. I'm impressed with my selection. Do come again. Well, maybe we, it's just not something that we can talk to you about. You're a pain in the bum, though, but uh, okay. Let's go and pop in to see someone who's a friend of our father's, apparently. Okay, here we go. Uh, here's my head, and possibly his head around. Uh, there are some things around, but it would be thievery. I'm definitely not stealing off a friend of my father's, my lord. Uh, this isn't stealing because it's not red. It's only stealing if it's red. It's empty anyway. Also empty. <sighs> okay, well, let's have a chat. Ingmar's home speaks of comfort and plenty, but with a certain gaudiness. Old trophies and weapons stand side by side with costly but useless decorations. A fire crackles merrily in the hearth. Before you is a table laden with wooden platters of fruits, cheeses, and sweetmeats. Ingmar stands at one end, biting into an apple and chewing with great relish. His eyes light up as he sees you, and bits of apple fly from his mouth as he speaks. Avak, there you are! Um. Hmm. Not your spit. What? You don't speak like that to your host, even if it's true. The promise of mead and stories of beyond's deeds, how could I refuse? Ingmar wipes his mouth on his sleeve and grins widely. Come then, you are my guest, and no guest of mine will be thirsty for long. Ingmar picks up a pair of drinking horns and sets them on the hearth, beckoning you to join him. Your herdmen move to help themselves as a number of thralls bring forth more food and drink. Oscar slides next to you and places a tentative hand on your wrist, whispering, I wouldn't drink that if I were you. Ooh. Her pale eyes implore you meaningfully from beneath the curtains of her dark hair. I smelled rhubarb leaf on my horn. This man is trying to poison us. Hmm. I'm not going to doubt my my uh, my herd. Thank you, Roskwa. Ingmar is pretending to be preoccupied with his mead, but you can tell he's st straining to listen in. Um. Hmm. It's a medium one, and I'm not very high on finesse. Really, I've got four. Um, from where do you know my father, Ingmar? Ingmar leans against the hearth, his eyes growing distant as he gazes into the crackling flames. We were of the same herd back then, allied against ours. We were strong, him and I. Put those milksops in their place. 
He chuckles, hoarsely into his beard. <laughs> hey, how do you get an Osman dizzy? I don't know. How? You ask him to piss in the corner of a barrel. Ha, 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 ha. Wow, okay. Um, I'm going to roll finesse. I'm going to just see. I'm going to try to switch our horns. I failed. Ingmar's hand darts forth with surprising swiftness as he grabs your wrist. What are you doing, Avak? Lie. Your horn was almost empty. I was going to refill it for you. He releases his grip, eyes searching your face. You are my guest, Avak. Drink up and let the thralls see to our needs. I'm going to pretend to drink then. To worry is true and honorable. Skull. You bring the horn up, careful to avoid the pace on the rim. You pretend to drink, all the while making sure that none of the li amber liquid passes your lips. Um, well, I'm actually quite perceptive, so got a decent chance of this. Look at the thralls. Ingmar's thralls look strong and healthy, too much so in fact. As one of them leans in to refill your horn, you spot the glint of steel concealed beneath his rough spun clothes. Hmm. How did you and Mjorn part ways? Ingmar stares into his horn, a shallow passing over his face. A shadow, sorry. Your father set forth with his herd to sail west. I thought that was the end of him. Never heard that he had returned. Not until no news of his recent death. I'm also extremely good with sense. Uh, I'm going to listen closely. The bitterness in Ingmar's voice drips with injured pride. You get the sense that he and your father did not part on good terms. Oops. It is time for me to wake up. Everything is awesome. Don't, don't panic. Don't worry. It's just 7 a.m. And I've recorded all the way through the night because I'm a workaholic. You didn't sail with him? He shakes his head and sighs heavily. I did not. I... It was not my choice. I'll pretend to drink again. Ingmar's eyes harden as he watches you pretend to sip from the horn. If you could be so old that I would not notice your insult. Continue. You reject my hospitality so brazenly. Your father's son indeed. You're trying to poison me. Spineless whelp. Ingmar's visage is grim as he sets the horn aside. Your father wronged me. Insulted my honour. Anger and sorrow work his face into an ugly grimace. Then the bastard went and died. When you see him, tell him Ingmar did not forget his slight. Okay. Well then. Perhaps I should have just announced that they, they went... Uh, they went thrall straight away. But... Let's have a look then. I would like to uh, see these characters. We've got healer there. Got a bowman. Bowman. Some strong characters here. Okay. Right. Well. Moskva. Yeah, we really should have should have started the combat rather than let them do it. The best thing we can do now is protect ourselves. So I'm gonna run down here. We can get through there a little bit. Kettle, I'd like you down here as well. I would like you to block. Yes. Let's let's have you move in. Block that area. I would have uh, Gunnar get down here. Block this approach. That would do. Now then. Roskva, you're going to move last. Let's get you into close combat with the archer there. Force them to have to move out if they want to move at all. Now, Roskva, I can have you... You'd be useful if you could get Kettle to uh, be able to poison. That's going to have to be it for us. Turn. Oh, damn. That's unfortunate. And another stun. Quick shot. 
twice point blank range. That is nasty. Okay. Good stab. And flight. Damn it. Okay, raise morale. Uh, we're we're gaining a lot of nasty wounds here. I've got to be honest. All right, let's get you. All of them, them are over there. That's not a good place for us. But I should be able to get a quick shot here. I could go for the archer, or I could possibly just take you down as fast as I can. What's wrong with the uh, button? Uh, let's go for, if I go for a quick shot here, 41% chance to hit, 46. You're in cover. Let's drop a ranging shot. Sorry about this. I know, I know it's, it, I'm ranging shotting over you. It's kind of rude. 71% chance to hit, You're still in cover. Okay, go for it. And follow up over there. Very nice indeed. Now, Roskova. Uh, let's see. It's not quite what we need there. But if you move in, you could take out either one of these. Go for it. There we go. That's one down. Well done, Rosqua. Uh, right. Can you get in there and take that one out? You can almost take them out. Will you just go for a stun attack on him? I would prefer it, but I don't think we're going to get that option. Uh, do it. Try. Let's see. There we are. Stunned. Very nice. Okay. I could not hit there, but if I move down here, I'll be able to. I think I'm going to try that. Get a ranging shot. I'm not going to use a ranging shot just yet. Uh, right, let's turn that off for now. Can I not hit anything? No, I can. There we go. That's got a 95% chance to hit. Let's take them down. There we go. Poor Nephia is going to get hurt from this, and there's not a lot I can do about it. Now let's pull back into cover. Really would love to get you over there so that... Well, actually, you can get some cover here. That's not too bad. And if I move up, that will actually put me in cover and prevent them from easily being able to do too much. Actually, we can use this. Free action. Go for it. Can I... Uh, dust. Can we do that? Hmm. How do we get this to trigger? There we go. Perfect. And then turn. Alright, you'll come out of your stun on this one. It's gonna hurt. Yes, yeah, it's hurting a lot already. Ow! How rude. I demoralized. That's fine for now. They've just come out of stun. Okay. Now then. Kettle. You could probably just take them out. It's only 61% chance, actually. It's not the best chance for us at all. Uh... Let's not, then. You could just stab, but let's hold off on that. I need to stop you from using your abilities, I really do. I could drop a ranging shot there. There we go. I'm going to go for a quick shot. Hard, you're in full cover. Okay, oh, damn it, I keep pressing that button. 
what can we have you do? Hook and slash. It's a full action, mind you, but go for it. There we go. Nice chunk of damage there. Uh, we could move in and stun again. Alternatively, I could go for a quick shot and just drop them both on you. 65% chance is not great, but it'll do. In a pinch. If we can take you out, that's going to be great. Ah, oh, Dread. Oh, well. It's worth the effort. Can you get a shot on him? No. But maybe from here you will be able to. Actually, yeah, let's do this. Okay. Uh, no, actually, you've still got cover. Ah, oh, how annoying is that? And you got cover there as well. Uh, I could go for a shot here. Bring you down to almost death. There we are. Roscova can finish the job there. I can have... Ooh, here's an opportunity. Let's move in. Between flanked and attack. Well done. Now, Roskva, you can just go for the knife at this point. There we go. Well done. And with that, I want you in some cover, please. Don't be out and about. Kettle? Oh, I can't quite get you out there. You can hang tight there. I think that's the end of our, this turn. I think we're going to see someone else go down in a moment. No, a miss. Good. Miss again, please. Ha ha! Double miss. And a stun. But that's fine. You're dead on this turn. And you know what? For insulting my father, I'm going to be the one to kill you, you scalawag. Go for it. Full power attack. No! Scoundrel! Ugh. All right, then. Well, that's quite annoying, but we can easily finish you off with this. Hook and slash. There we go. Wow, you lopped off his arm. I approve. Massive levels of approval. Uh, sure, let's get in there. Yeah, just get up there and, and knife them. Just between the ribs. It's fine. My right, cattle, you can't hit them. Oh, actually, no, you can. It's not bad. Hit them? No. What about if we move up? Can you hit them? Yep. Can you hit them? Yep. Well, we could just try and take you out or... Well, actually, yeah, let's go for you. There we go. Harried as well. At that point, you can just move over here. And I think that's good. Oof. Yeah, I don't think that's going to save you. I'm going to be honest with you. We, we kind of had a poor engagement here, I'll be honest, but uh, yeah. this is not going to go well for you. Resisted the Harry, though. I must confess, that's actually impressive. Uh, let's move up, and then attack from up there. Really? You got a knife because you... Oh, of course, I haven't given you the uh, skills to allow you to do that. Uh, of course. Although we didn't leave your engagement range... We did effectively move out of combat with you for a brief moment. Yeah, go for the, the knife. Rosk for getting all of the kills there, my lord. Okay, if we hadn't had Roskova with us there, that could have gone very nasty. A severe fracture. Ugh, light puncture, light infection, a moderate fracture. This is not good. Alright, accept. Well, that wasn't great. Go ahead and uh, gather everything we can. That was a poor engagement, to be to be sure. A willow bow might be nice. Got caltrops. Okay, fills an area with sharp spikes, which slows down an enemy attempting to walk across them. And herbs. Nothing. A decent amount of valuables, I suppose. Not great by any stretch, but uh, decent. And what have we got in here? Armor oil. Quite a lot of valuables there. Okay, that was well worth it. 
Still, severe fracture is not something I really wanted to see. Wow. You proper chopped them up. My goodness. Herbs and... Male biter. Plus five armor piercing. Ooh. Now then, we're talking. We are definitely talking there. Some nice gear. Let's actually have a look. Because currently I'm set up to use... Oh, I'm used, using knives and shields. However, you might actually get a good job with male biter. So 24 durability, that's 8 of 8 durability. Yes, there is really no reason. No, do not deconstruct it. There we are. Uh, this is a worse shield than the one you've currently got. Well, a bow, more or less the same. A fur helmet. These primitive fur helmets. Uh, actually, you're getting this. Let's get your helmet on your head. There we are. And currently, oh, you've currently got a broadsword. You don't actually have skill in knives. You've got a sword at the moment. Uh, I'm fairly certain you don't have any skills in knives. No, you don't. Hmm. Okay. Well, my strength is... Well, actually, my strength is as high as my finesse, so maybe I should put a couple of points into it. I'll see about that, actually. I will see. But for the time being, that wasn't, uh, wasn't an awful engagement. It wasn't a great one, though, either. Uh, healing up at camp is going to be a pain in the bum. Hopefully, though, we've got enough points that we can uh, get some more healers. Because we desperately need those. All right, then. We do have quite a lot of medicine, actually. So we probably aren't in a terrible position in that regard. Uh, we could now go over to uh, Jarl Ranghilder's uh, longhouse. And into... Uh, well, not introduce ourselves, but uh, make her aware that we are here. But you know what? I think before we do any of that, we're going to go over here because there was a trap door or something I'm fairly certain I spotted somewhere in amongst all of this. Where is that now? There we go. Right. In the next episode, we are going to be checking out what's in that trapdoor and then going and uh, visiting the Jarl and seeing what she has to say about the marsh. It does seem to me that all eyes are on the marsh right now. We've got, I think, two quests currently in the marsh and very likely to get a third. But that is it from me. I do hope you've enjoyed this episode, though, and will be joining me for the next. But until then, and as always, do take care, everyone.